Hi, and welcome back to my channel. This is Country Conversations with D with D. How you doing? Uh, this is going to be my episode review of Love and Marriage Huntsville season whatever, whatever. We don't really know. We just guessing. <laughs> so I say season six, 20, uh, season six B, episode 23. <laughs> ah, child, you know. What what is the name of the episode? Huh? Cause uh, I know it's about Mel and her rebirth and something about uh Roger this, Roger that, something like that. Okay, so we're gonna move on. I'm not gonna just like study the name like that, like that. We're gonna check that out in, in the description. Cause it's just like this was a good solid episode, however, I can my cabbage over there cooking. About to have me a good old son dinner with some cabbage. And some cornbread. Yes, I say corn. Because this is country conversations. How you doing? And on the mother wind. Let's get started. Okay, so. The episode starts with Sexy Chris and Dancing Big Nail. Mm -hmm. Again, down at this club called Reflections, I believe it was. And child, nobody can have peace without talking about motel, hotel, right? And get to dancing, you know, and living it up or whatever, and enjoying each other. Um, however, you know, Nell's got to bring the mess, don't she? Starts it off, you know, you know, flitch. Cause I should do flitch, you know. I don't mind her doing no flitch like that. Six seven. Uh, I think that uh, Martell is having an issue with us still being friends. Martell, I mean with Mel, and uh, Chris says, say, say what? You got an issue? What do you mean? Well, when he brought the wine over, he was talking smack, you know, telling me about her infidelities, telling me that I was always on her side when she did, did things to in the marriage and she was unfaithful. I, I don't know anything about that, Neil, you know. Then, then he started off calm, and then he, his voice elevated a little bit. And Sex of Chris said, huh? Not, not my wife. <laughs> and uh, she was like, yeah, I mean, he was really perturbed. Because, you know, I brought up about the name change, and I was going to the event, the name change event. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, well. After that, I think me and Motel Hotel, we're going to have to have us a conversation. Nell says, well, yeah, I think y'all should have a conversation. But he's, he's accusing me of never take, holding Mel accountable. And uh, let's say, what are we holding him accountable? What are we holding Mel accountable for? We're going to stay friends with both of them. Nothing wrong with that. And then... uh. She said that she told him. She said, I told him that. You know, she's changing her name. That's her thing. She's changing her name to to be reborn again and, you know, to release herself from all those old demons that you put up on her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then uh, she was like, but if we get a divorce, hell, I'm keeping this name because I earned it. At 30 years. Oh, yeah. So, in the next scene, we get the Stormy and Tiffany. Tiffany. Mr. Tiff Tiff. <laughs> Tiff Tiff. And uh, Stormy was like, uh, you know, I'm telling you about the issues that was going on with uh, Kiki and uh, Letitia. And in a way, in many ways, I feel like you are not impartial when it comes to Kiki. Why? What do you mean? Why would I be impartial to someone like that? Someone like what? <laughs> you know? See? See? I feel that you're colors. That's how I feel. I don't care if you are with a dark skin hood. I think that you are colorist and looking down on her. Because this dark-skinned, beautiful woman you think is a thief. 
and you know about her drug addiction. So, what you're trying to do is, again, pull people in on your team in a backdoor type of way, like so what you was doing last night over there on Belkin. I see you. Tiff tough. And then she was like, well, you know, I don't think that um, Kiki was coming from a bad place initially. She was upset because uh, Tisha was ignoring her. And she said, well, I mean, what, what, what was she? Be upset because T Kiki was, in, um, she was ignoring her. And she's looking at all abilities like, this don't make sense to me. This this lady is coming into this group and she's beneath all of us. And Tiffany says, I just don't associate with people like that. Say, so what now? You don't associate with people. Again, people like what? Mm. Then she says, uh, then uh, Storm says, well, you act like you look down on her to the audience as well. And then she says, uh, do you want us to be cool, Kiki and I? Or are you stirring the pot a little bit? The doggone storm snatched her purse <laughs> off her shoulder. You could tell <laughs> that Tiffany was taking her back. She was like, oh, I don't fuck up. <laughs> All right. She said, that right. Don't do that. <laughs> storm said. And uh, she was like, let me calm myself down. Five, four, three, two, one. Settle down. We're going to have to take a seat. And she goes to the table. And she gets it together because she's pissed off. And so is the audience. <laughs> At least I was. Then she says, you have a one-sided beef with this woman. This woman don't have any issues with you. And she says, um, did you say something about my products? And she says, huh? <laughs> acting all the blue it's like she's clueless as to what she's talking about and then she denies it now miss tough tough girl if you talk as much ish as you do stand in it ten toe down in it with your shoes off in the rocks on the beach stand in it see see i have a problem with people like you okay you got all of this, but you don't back it up because you know Kiki probably whoop your ass. <laughs> then you turn it to the meek and mild Caucasian side of yourself and get emotional. Girl, back. And she was like, um, well, she, you know, I'm willing to have, now she's Realizing that Storm ain't playing with her. Well, I'm willing to, real, uh, you know, uh, I'm willing to have a conversation with her if, you know, she's willing to have one with me, but you're going to have to facilitate that at meal spot. Child, when those people were walking down that hill, I know I wasn't the only one thinking of, but I immediately thought of Giselle's Lego house. <laughs> Those people walk down that hill, those hills, and the, and the hills were wiggling and wobbling, and they were trying to hold on, like like uh, Ashley and and uh, Sh now nah, Sharice had on the thick flip flop that the uh, the, the old oh, ladies wear, but uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Rob, hey, shoes shaking, feet shaking, man. Yeah. The driveway was looking like the Lego house driveway. Now, I know you got a beautiful home, and your setup was beautiful. But that driveway was reminiscent of the Lego house over there on Potomac. Moving right along. Then, uh, she's getting her hair done. She's looking beautiful. Mel is beautiful. I'm just going to tell you like I, like I do. I'm going to keep it real and raw with you like I do. Now, I'm not saying that Eric Young is not beautiful. But this is beauty and the total package. Enterprising. 
thinks, keeps her head on straight, and you go over there with a trap mouth that done had braces on her teeth for 15 years. Mm -mm -mm. Messed up your whole family. I don't know, but Mel said, you know, God said go. So she went. And uh, Mel's mom was in there giving her positive words of affirmation and telling her, I raised a beautiful daughter and I raised a respectful, kind woman, a kind mother to her children. Now, who would have known that the kids were there? I saw pictures over there on Caramel Reels page. The kids were there. I told y'all. I told y'all Martell been wearing tank suits. He'd get that baby on his visitation day and pick out one of his nice little suits and wear it in his scene. Because he ain't got no money. Ain't got no job. Bob the Builder without a builder's license. Move right along. And then she gives a positive words and affirmation and she tells her, you are still and was always a Roger. You are still the woman that I raised you to be. Ooh, Miss Fan. Miss Fan. <laughs> right now. I don't have my mama no more. I, oh, I don't have my mama no more, Miss Fan, Miss Fan, Miss Fan. Let's just come. Let me move on for the tears start falling in my in my thing here. And I'm not supposed to uh I'm not, you know, good at the editing, so. I don't need to be staying up all night trying to cut this out. <sighs> deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Okay. So, beautiful male walks down the aisle. And a lot of people said that that was too much, but I feel her. And it's my, if I had long money like Mel, and I was letting go of a name that was attached to a broke, dick, broke ass, weak dick, misogynistic ass. Oh, of a man like Motel Hotel, I probably would do the same thing. Cape and all. Get it, girl. And so she gives her rebirth speech. And she uh, talks about how, you know, she, she knew that she was always the woman that she was, someone that was stolen from her during this marriage. She, a lot of people, don't see Mel like I see Mel. I see Mel as a woman who really, really tried to work on her marriage. And when she got pregnant with Sugar Mama, a lot of people and a lot of content creators were saying that she got pregnant on purpose to keep Mel and no um, motel hotel and no baby is going to keep a man. But Mel said before Ariane got pregnant that if... That was her final straw. And this is before she got pregnant as well. That was her final straw. If she found out one more thing, whatever that thing was, God see it go. Right? And it just so happened that the baby, baby Arion, came into the picture. That was final nail in the coffin. She knew for sure that he was still out there in his five-year relationship. With his mashed potatoes, coleslaw, and gravy, baked beans on the side, fresh fries, mac and cheese, not the country can, can not the box. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just think of her like that. She got that side chick name, side dish name. Anyway, and um, then the. Preacher, he blesses her with his speech, and then you know, he pretty much has her. That's what it looked like to me, like a marriage ceremony. Like he, she married herself, and married to her original name. Now what the hell gonna do? She get married again? She gonna keep the name? Anyway, next, oh now, now now, now. Mel, you know I saw Martell the other day, and he came over to the house. You know, Nell got the rest. He came over to the house and, you know, he was uh talking about your uh, name change ceremony. Say what now? <laughs> now, that's why I posted on my Twitter page. Why was that reason? Because I couldn't figure out why you were bringing that up to him. 
You brought that up. Nia, you got a little line, bro. You got a little line, bro. And so uh, she was like, why should he care? Why should he care what I do? We are divorced. I'm going to change my name. I can do whatever I want to. Can I not? And she said, well, Martell said, you know, your name, you know, your name is uh, great because of uh, him. I was, I was telling this shit right, Ray Rogers, before I met Motel Hotel, was I, was I not? That's when Mel was letting you know, I'm being sweet, and I'm speaking in my sweet tone. But if you say one more thing about Motel Hotel, I'm going to put your ass out of here like I did the rest of the cast. Oh, yeah. We all noticed that. I tweeted about it, too. I was sexing Marcus. I just like to see Marcus and Chris on my screen. <laughs> Marcus so fine. Marcus. So fine. But uh, he wasn't there. Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Well, you know, you ain't got to explain why the Scots wasn't there. Didn't anybody miss them? I did. Now, being that you had a relationship, Kiki, maybe Kiki was going through something. Girl, that would have been. Hot fire had you invited her and didn't invite the rest of that. The, the core six. The least interesting person on the carry cheese puff. Marceau in his hips. Letitia in her thick tongue. <laughs> Kimmy in her snake-like behavior. None of them were there. <laughs> Not even tough tough. Wasn't there. Next thing. Let's go on lead a um let's lead a rebirth ceremony. She got her name back. Let's go. She was getting a lot of speeches and accolades. Let's move on to the next scene with Miss Stormy and her CFO. The little CFO was cute too. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they meet and he's telling her about he that business is back on the uptick. Now, he's patting himself on the back. Did you notice that? You know, he calls for me. <laughs> and then, you know, Storm is like, well, you know, I was going through some things. You know, I was on bed rest. And people were taking advantage of me, signing and forging my signature to things. And I had a rough. And uh, I just almost lost it all. And, you know, I almost had these thoughts. Ideation. Yes, ideation thoughts. And uh, he's like, I'm so glad that I was able to pat himself on the back, able to come in and give you the tool that you needed to make this business grow. This business that you are in, and we got our marketing together, you could be making up to $10 million. Did she? Did he say what? He said $10 million a month? Gross. Storm me. Sister need a job. Let me promote your products on my channel, girl. My channel don't have to be monetized to get monetized. We'll help you promote your products. Sponsor your girl. We homies. Remember? Camp camp. <laughs> Next, we get the Fletcher. Now, a lot of people thought that this was misplaced, but I think that they are trying to test new um, families because... Nell and Chris brought in the family, right? And um, not really so much as Tough Tough and Lewis. Tough Tough brings the mess, and that's about it. But we get business with Chris and Nell. We get family with Chris and Nell now. We get them, you know, showing us their relationship. You know, they are open, right? So... Maybe they're being the opening credits. I think this is a test, right? And they feel, I could tell they feel like, you know, this should have been us in the first place. What y'all doing with Marceau and his hips? When you could have had sex with Chris on the screen. Yes, 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 yes. You know what? Nell is a beautiful woman. It's just her little, little it's just her little wigs and my, my pharaohs, you know. And then we find out that, um, they do Sunday dinner, and we got our Kiki. 
She got a kiki too, man. I had, I'm not gonna name all these children because a bunch of I just know Kiki. Kiki stood out. <laughs> Why? Because Kiki can't keep a job. Okay. So we have Nell and Chris. They have one each that they brought into the marriage and then they had two together. Right. So apparently these two together is reminding me of those kids over there on DC. When we gonna get DC back. I'm just saying. And so um Nell's like, why y'all go to flesh with everything? Y'all don't tell me nothing. How's you overreact? That's what they say. And then uh, she was like, I overreact because I have to do every damn thing. And then Kiki say, see, that's why we go to um. <laughs> because apparently Miss Kiki done lost another job. She was working for Miss Nell at down to the daycare center, one of her daycare centers, and she lost that job because Miss Nell fired. So Miss Nell can't judge other people who fired Kiki because apparently <laughs> Kiki does the same thing on all her jobs. So this time she got a proper child care. So you didn't have proper child care and your aunt owns the daycare. Come on with it. Make it make sense. <laughs> this girl. So then we got Sister Chris Jr. That's what I'm going I'm to call him. I don't know his real name. I'm going to call him Chris Jr. And um, he he's uh been locked up a couple times. Locked up, they didn't let him out. So mom and dad did. So they went down and they paid the six thousand dollar bond or whatever to get us out of jail. And they kept the dog. This was collateral, right? He wanted a dog back. Miss Neil said, "No sir." <laughs> and he said, "Give my dog back. I pay on my fine. Win win. This ain't no damn win win." <laughs> she said, and then other daughter said, ah, and, you know, Nell said, I want my money back. And the other daughter said, see, that's what I'm talking about right there, mom. You don't give us breaks. Give you breaks. You shut the hell up. Whatever her name is. And after that, one that uh, she told to shut the hell up. And I believe that was one of the kids that they had together. The daughter that they had together. I, said, I think they had a daughter and a son together. Or is that the daughter that she brought? I ain't gonna try. I want to say maybe that was the daughter she brought to me. And I think Chris brought a son in there. And then they had a daughter and a son. Stop. Don't. I can't. But anyway, that was the end of the episode. It was going to be a too big continue. Like I said, come on in, come on in. This is Country Conversation with DVD. The channel has no monetization so it's commercial free entertainment over here but anyway as we uh you know get monetized on our way to monetization go ahead and come on in and get the likes up subscribe i don't know what you're waiting for i am entertaining over here okay and as i do when i close i'm gonna chunk them up deuces by the way i enjoy the fletchers